Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 19 of my Clouds of Darkness Let's Play, broadcasting live from the treasure room of the Labyrinth. Actually, not live. I guess I am at this very second, but you know what? We're going to end up in a philosophical discussion about exactly when is now, and that's going to take the rest of the episode. Moving on. We're at the treasure room of the Labyrinth. I completed it on a live stream, which I uploaded parts 1, 2, and 3 of the live stream as parts 1, 2, and 3 of episode 18. Apologies for the cop-out on episode 18. I simply did not have time to get a full normal episode recorded as well as do that live stream, and I thought that I would. There were a few technical issues and a fair few mistakes on my part, but now we're here. We have actually none of the ma uh, labyrinth mapped out because it doesn't seem to remember the underground map in between. Uh, maybe if I break this, some of it will show up. Hang on, can I, can I not even... Huh, yeah, this thing can't harvest iron. Huh, that's funny. Oh yeah, that causes more of it to appear. But I'd have to go walking all around all over the place to find the rest of it. So, a couple of things that we did do to make the labyrinth happen. I should really replace those with something simpler like stone. Or wool. Yeah, we'll use wool instead of leaving iron there. It'll give me a little less hate, I'm sure. Uh, for one, and this is an issue actually that I need to address... We added the energy upgrade and collector upgrade to the adjustable bag, which is cool, except for one problem. Uh, let me show you. Uh, actually, if I hold Alt, Shift, Control, and left click on these carpet, I will throw them all on the ground. And then I'll pick them all up, and you'll notice that only one stack of carpet has gone into my inventory. That's right, if the adjustable bag is picking up multiple stacks of the same item at the same time, you get one stack. So, collector upgrades, not really the thing to be using. I wanted to show you with something disposable like carpet. So we're going to grab our Aromic Hammer from Aroma Core. The Ur mod, the Over mod that controls better chests and a handful of others. Shift right click, and then we're going to shift left click to remove that and the energy upgrade. We also added the lightweight upgrade, which is why I have a permanent speed 2 buff. That is just, like, crazy, because let me show you the uh, mats on the lightweight upgrade. It's super cheap. Some gold nuggets and some feathers, and you get a permanent speed 2 buff. I can go places with speed and style now. So I've got speed and I've got step up, so I'm really happy about that. All right, so we've got a ton of rewards here from completing the labyrinth, as well as a couple, if I glance under there, of carpenter safes hanging out. Neat, huh? Ooh, look, more diamonds. <laughs> Wait a second. What, what, what's this pattern supposed to be? I? I'm not certain what that's supposed to mean. Anyway, probably means something. There's a couple of other uh, carpenter safes around. There's even a couple in the ceiling. That one's gonna be fun, all those plant growth accelerators. And I will literally have all of the resources I could ever want in this place. I mean, I've already extracted two stacks of bli diamond blocks, yes, of uh, diamond box, yes, there we are, uh, a couple of stacks of blocks of iron, and a couple of stacks of blocks of gold, a stack of lapis lazuli, blocks, a ton of steel, yeah, we're in good shape. Now, the problem that we're going to run into, or at least the problem I'm going to run into, is I've got a lot of stuff and a really crappy inventory system back home. So we should do something about that, and that's going to be the focus of this episode, is corralling the inventory situation, because it's pretty ridiculous. And then, we will be able to easily and quickly extract everything from this entire chest room into the new inventory system we're going to build. Hopefully we can get it done today. If not, well, there's always next episode. Definitely we'll have all of this extracted. And in the new inventory system, yeah, just see all of these ingots from Ender.io. They need a place to live. Uh, before the next world download with episode 20. Man, that's going to be a long time. Eh, sorry about that bleep. I hope I didn't destroy any eardrums there. Update from player.me. It's still not always staying muted between visits to the website, which is probably intended functionality. I don't know. I should bug the guys. Good site, definitely worth checking out and following, and you get some really cool sound effects to go with it. Anyway, to get started on building a better inventory system, 
I have expanded this platform a bit and cleared off a lot of the clutter that was around this area over here. As you can see, just put down a bunch of stone, put down some glowstone covers as replacement blocks for the floors so that I have a plenty of light. Expanded this area out, tore down a wall, moved all of the chests and everything out to the side. So already it's looking a lot cleaner. My plan is going to be lining the walls of this area with the inventory sorting system that I want to use. And I'm going to use transfer pipes because I've never built a transfer pipe sorting system before and it looks like fun. If only because the sorting pipe and the mob, uh, sorry, mob, mod sorting pipe seem rather powerful and rather simple to use. So I'm excited to do that. So I'm going to grab a bunch of materials together. I'm also going to make myself, oh, probably 20 or so crystal chests because I can. And while I'm doing that, because it's just going to be a bunch of crafting annoyance, you know, um, I'm not going to make you guys sit through watching me craft a bunch of chests and upgrades. I'm also going to finish out the upgrades that I'm missing. So silver, silver to gold, diamond to crystal and diamond to obsidian. We'll get those sorted out. Once I come back, we can start construction in earnest. See you soon. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some sorting pipes crafting in our QED. Sorting pipes are made with stone slab, gold, glass in the QED. One recipe gets you two, which is why we're going to do this right here. Hey, you know what, what helps if you actually have your gold ingots on hand? I don't know why those were put away. And I seem to be out of glass, but that's okay. I've had quite a bit of it cooking up over here, so there we are. We're in good shape. Fantastic. And we're going to let those cook while we're off doing other things. Here, Mr. Uh, quite expensive decoration. Have a hat. Oh no, the sound muffler. It does nothing. Why? Why, Temo? Why? Have you made your own blocks immune to your sound muffler mechanic? Uh, luckily, we can just move away from it. Oh, that is, that is, that is deliciously evil, you terrible person, you. Moving on. So, the mod sorting pipes are going to be very easily made. You just upgrade a sorting pipe with a couple of redstone in the QED. We'll make a handful of those, but we're not going to need anywhere near the full stack that I have. I just wanted to have it because, you know, more is better. What we're going to do, we're going to get one crystal chest down, and we're going to get a transfer node on that chest. And we're going to start putting down some transfer pipe. Just plain old regular transfer pipe. We'll do this entire wall, I think. And we're going to go... Uh, well, let's see what's comfortable. One, two, three. Uh, we can go four high. We're going to do a wall of barrels. Because I, I've tried to do the wall of barrel sorting system a few times in a few different worlds. And I've it's just never caught on for me, you know? So this time we're going to do it and we're going to do it right. And then we're going to go around here because we're going to have the next set right in front of there. Fantastic. Uh, give me my barrels back. You know what? I wonder if I can builders want these. Hey! Friggin' builders wand anyway. Where's my, where's my, where's my... Um, hmm. Maybe if I put the barrels in and then lock it and then take it back. Now can I build just one? No. Okay. All right. I'll stop playing around now. That's a shame. Actually, I bet. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's pointing the wrong way. Let me be lazy. Darn you. <laughs> Darn you and such. So the other problem we're going to run into, as you remember, is the a single transfer node is not all that fast. However, we're not going to need to add another transfer node to that. That would actually be counterproductive for what we want to do. Instead, we're just going to crank that thing up with a lot of speed upgrades. And when I say a lot of speed upgrades, I mean I'm going to need to consider planting more redstone because I'm running low. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, no, I did not want essence of tin. Five, six, seven, eight. That'll give us a handful of stacks of it. Oh, God, that noise again. And we're going to need all of the gold in the world. 
We've got a little bit of redstone there, a little bit here. You see, the problem with this whole plan of let's use a bunch of speed upgrades is speed upgrades are expensive. You know what? I'm running low on room. We have some pop. How did I hear pop? That was probably extra utilities. So let's get through the night and then let's craft, 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 craft a bunch of speed upgrades. As you can see, Aroma Backup is running. This is your every episode reminder that I have Aroma Backup running, not to save me if I die, but entirely to prevent world corruption. And I'm going to keep reminding you every uh, episode because I've already gotten a couple of people sending me messages being all like, why are you cheating? And I'm all, I'm not cheating. I just don't want a world corruption thing to end the series. So chillax, yo. There we go. Uh, that's not going to go nearly far enough. That's okay. We'll grab a stack of ingots. And a stack of nuggets. Even though I have a stack of nuggets somewhere. Yeah, we definitely need to plant more redstone. Yikes. That's alright. I've got a couple of free plots over there. I'll go handle that on my own time. Not bother you guys with it. And because I don't expect to have an absolutely massive flood of resources. Because I'm not going to be... Like, I've been looking at the quest book. And I just don't think that I'm going to need to do any mass resources challenges. Other than that, like... 25,000 ice, and even that will go pretty quick. So we're gonna get our gold in there, and we're gonna... We're gonna need iron and diamond and redstone and glowstone, and there's gonna be a lot of, like, manual putting things in here, but let's handle the gold right now. Now, the big problem that we're gonna run into is the instant that we are looking to go any higher than this first layer, like that, well... There's nothing stopping this transfer node from choosing to go left and then choosing to go left and continuing that and skipping almost all of the barrels. So we're going to build something that forces it not to do that. And that something is a search upgrade. There are... Hmm, search <laughs> upgrade. Uh, there are two types of search upgrades. You have your breadth first search and your depth first first search. The depth first search does exactly what you would expect. It goes deep and then wide, whereas the breadth first search does the opposite. And you make those by using a number of speed upgrades as well as one of the pseudo round robin upgrades. Uh, actually, I need to make the depth first to make the breadth first, so I'm going to need to go make some more redstone before we even get any further in this. Okay, well, if I need redstone, then I know exactly what I should do to make that happen because I'm tired of relying on magical crops for my resources, and I've already mastered magical crops and found a better way. So, to continue with this, we're going to get a little something set up to make some more uh, redstone. I'll be right back once I have the materials together for that. Alright, so you've seen the power flower from Project E aka equivalent exchange to redux, at least that's what I'm calling it, uh, done before in its protean form. We're going to build the full thing right here. Give me just a moment. I like to have the, well, sometimes I like to have the uh, kind of outer faces of the, well, the holes, the, the furnace looking faces of things covered you here. Whoops, nope. Like that. And then the last ones cover up. Would normally cover up these. The way I had it before, I had the energy collector in the center, and I was, say, injecting redstone with power. Wow, that very quickly became a bit of Mobius fuel. To give it to... Uh, oh, that's only running at half. Here, let me give that a bit of glowstone. Which I think I have in my golden bag of holding. In fact, I have glowstone panels or covers, glowstone covers, which will be a lot less obtrusive. So it runs based on light level. The collectors give you their power output based on what their current light level is. As such, you kind of want to cover the whole thing with this glowstone. And they provide enough light on their own going down that... For example, this guy running at full power, even though he does not have a 16 light block in contact with him. Now, it's all well and good to have the energy collector in the center 
slowly powering things up, that's pretty cool. You know, that's not a bad thing. But we can do better. Uh, in fact, I can believe I can target this guy to a block of redstone if I wanted to. Set you there. Oh, you'll never get there because you're already past the block of redstone. But we could uncraft that alchemical coal down to uh, this, which is a lot less EMC, 512, than the 576 of the redstone. Put that in there, and it turns into blocks of redstone. Fancy, huh? That's one way to do it. Another and even better way is to craft a new item and grab this energy collector and toss it right there to complete the flower. Now we've got this gap in the center with all those antimatter relays pointing at it. And to fill that gap, we're going to come over here and we're going to make the energy condenser. Now, this is an annoying block to make in this mod pack. It requires four tainted essence, five of these infused diamonds, because four of the infused diamonds, and then one more to make the al alchemical chest, two of the purple gems, which you've seen me craft, so I'm not going to do it now, and it requires covalence dust, which is very easy to make in standard Project E and rather annoying in this pack because it requires emerald essence, diamond essence, and lapis essence. So let's get that going. Uh, oh, hey, you know what helps if you actually turn your stone into stone bricks before you try to craft the essence bricks. So essence bricks are made with eight stone bricks surrounded by a bit of the essence in question. And we're going to need eight emerald, eight lapis, and eight diamond stone bricks. And then those eight stone bricks plus one block of the material in question. Ah, darn it. Resupply back. Uh, I thought it was one block of the material in question. Oh, it has to be in the upper left-hand corner because that's a shaped recipe. That will give, a, give us 20 medium covalence dust. So there goes a diamond essence and nine blocks of... Uh, and nine diamonds. And then we're going to do the same thing for the lapis. With a block of that. And for the emerald. But we need to make our block of emerald first, using up nine of our emeralds. Ugh. What a pain. There we go. Luckily, you only ever really need to do this once because unlike in uh, Equivalent Exchange 2, the covalence dust doesn't do a whole lot on its own. The low covalence dust makes the low dividing rod, the medium, the medium dividing rod, the high is used for alchemical bags, which are really nice, but mostly it's all used for the chests. The dividing rods, by the way, help you find ore when you're mining. That's not really going to be useful in this pack now, is it? So... We're now going to be able to make the alchemical chest uh, once I grab three obsidian from... Uh, do I even have three obsidian? I don't think I do. I think I've used it all. Okay, so... Oh, there we go. Three obsidian. Fantastic. Awesome. Now we have an alchemical chest, or we don't... Wait, wait. I'm forgetting something basic here, aren't I? Yeah. The infu No. We've got the infused diamond. We've got the two purple gems. Medium high, low. What's going on here? Well, besides me being unable to point at things properly. What am I missing? Purple, purple, obsid- Oh, that's an obsidian chest on the bottom. That's what the problem is. Alright, I've got one of them lying around, don't I? I don't think I'm using it for anything. Oh wait, no, I'm using it to store my diamond gear. And other random, random stuff. Uh, all right, well, diamond gear and other random stuff is going to get transferred over here. That won't take too terribly long. It'll just be slightly annoying. Because I'm very low on the inventory space. The plan was to actually use the condenser to use up all of this diamond gear that I've been saving up over time. Well, I can't do that until after I actually have the uh, condenser crafted. So apologies for watching me play chest swap for a moment. I swear that this should be the last or second to last video where that hap- Darn it. All that work and I have to go craft one anyway because, I don't know, the game hates me, I guess? Wow. Uh, attempted to open part builder. It took its sweet time. So, I need another chest. Because I'm running out of- running low on those things. I've been crafting a lot of them to make- meet the demands of this episode. I'm gonna need- Let's get through the night so it's not dark anymore. And let me go get that uh, obsidian chest made. I'll be right back. 
There we are, folks. Crafted the alchemical chest out of that obsidian chest. It was the only thing that I was missing. Got the storage upgrade achievement. And I went and I grabbed the tainted essence so you didn't have to listen to it ticking poison on me and deal with me being in the dark. I had six left. I am now down to two. And achievement get condense the world. So the energy condenser would work like a normal chest. For example, I can throw a diamond there and it holds the diamond. But if I were to put a bit of redstone in there, well, redstone's worth 64 EMC, diamond's worth 8,192, or about two stacks worth of redstone. And it, conver it converts just that fast. If I were to put the diamond back in, it would go slightly slower as it eats it all up, as it can only consume one, uh, you know, one item per tick or so, but it would eventually create it another diamond for me. Now, this thing, when plugged into the center of a power flower, or basically just next to an antimatter relay that is next to an energy collector, will slowly gain EMC towards whatever I have currently have targeted, which I'm going to target a block of redstone. Did I say slowly? Well, not when you have an entire uh, structure like this. It really won't take very long. Oh, there we go. It finished draining off all of the stored up, charged up power that was in the various energy collectors and antimatter relays. Now, normally, this would end up being a pretty, pretty much self-propagating event. You'd be done once you have the energy condenser and even one energy collector and antimatter relay, because you would have everything you needed in those three blocks to build everything else in the game, given enough time. The reason for that is dark matter. Most of the good items start from dark matter or blocks of dark matter or red matter, which is upgraded dark matter. In this pack, dark matter does not have an EMC value. As such, this energy collector condenser is not even going to be the center of this structure most of the time. I'm probably going to stuff another antimatter relay into the center of there for charging purposes later on. Those who know the mod will understand, those who don't, well, give it time, you'll see. For now, it's, do it's doing an admirable job of producing the redstone that I need to continue this build. So, our, um, what did we need? We needed a search upgrade. Our depth first requires the, yes, the pseudo round robin upgrade to create first. So we'll make ourselves one of those. And now we can make the depth first upgrade which is very expensive on the redstone. And then we can turn that into our bre breadth first upgrade. Fantastic. And while we're at it, we're going to make as many more speed upgrades as I have materials for, which I'm running out of, well, everything at this point, but that's okay. I really, well, that, that'll probably be more speed upgrades than I actually need. So if I put this breadth first search upgrade in here, and I have, say, Iron, which I have on hand, and Diamond, as some of the other possible export locations. For example, if I put Iron here and Diamond here, then any gold ingot I get is going to end up going to this barrel. And the best way I can illustrate that is actually just to toss them in there. With, oh, you know what helps? If I actually put the breadth first upgrade into the machine. Otherwise, it's going to put them wherever it feels like. Um, I could have sworn I had seven. Oh, some of them ended up in the right spot. And because this is locked and these are locked, I can now take them out. Put that gold back in there. And you should see all 38 ending up in that better barrel. Relatively slowly. And the reason it's going so slow is there's no speed upgrades. It searches about twice a second and picks up an item about twice a second. Every speed upgrade you add, I believe, doubles that speed. So with 29, it can take this 39 ingots and be done very, very quickly. I don't plan on inputting a ton of materials to this thing all of the time because I'm not planning on... Well, I mean, you can see the items draining out of there pretty quickly now. I don't plan on having uh, a ton of production running most of the time. As such, I'm not going to concern myself too much about the fact that it's not happening instantaneously. I don't need this to be a perfect sorting system, I just need it to do good enough. And right now, it is plenty good enough. Now, honestly, I probably want diamonds up there, 
and half the fun of putting this together is going to be sorting out exactly where I'm putting everything. So... I'm just gonna dump everything on the ground and move it all up there because that's where I really want it. Uh, I'm gonna spend some time filling in this wall of chests with redstone and glowstone and all of the mob drops and everything I can craft from these essences. I'm going to clear out all of these magical crops spaces because I have some plans that I want to start enacting sometime soon. But all of that is going to happen between episodes. Right now, I want to show you what this mod sorting pipe is about. So we're going to drop off a couple of things over here in the chest that I'm currently using to temporarily house my Project E gear. And, uh, you are going to grab the sorting pipes that we got. And we're going to make, oh, just a couple of them for now into the mod sorting pipe. Now, what the mod sorting pipe does is actually kind of fantastic. And I'll demonstrate it over here, even though this isn't where I'm going to be using the mod sorting pipe. Because it'll make my life a little bit easier. Don't worry, I just want to show you how it's going to work, and then I'll get all of the grindy detail bits done in between episodes so that you don't have to wait through all of that. Um, here, just give me a mess of stuff. Yeah, that's good. Come on, finish up. God, you're obnoxiously loud. Alright, so mod sorting pipe, mod sorting pipe, transfer pipe. Now what the mod sorting pipe does is it looks inside whatever chest and sees is this item that I'm attempting to put in here from the same mod as whatever is already in this chest. So for example, if I toss one bookshelf in here, well that's from Minecraft. If I now toss, uh, say, um, stone and lapis and redstone and iron and glass, it's all going to end up in that first chest because this is the Minecraft chest now as far as the sorting system is concerned. However, if I were to put, say, my golden bag of holding and my builder swan and my transfer nodes and my transfer pipes into there, well, it can't put those into this chest, so it's going to go to the next chest and see, oh, there's no mod specified, so we'll specify this for extra utilities now and start inputting all of the extra utilities gear. Now, if I toss in, say, just a random assortment of everything, it's going to sort the vanilla Minecraft items into the vanilla chest, the extra utilities items into the extra utilities chest, and then I've got a plane transfer pipe at the end here. And this is going to be my catch-all where all of the other stuff that doesn't fit the current categories goes. I'm going to have about nine chests, probably have one dedicated to Ender.io, one dedicated to extra utilities, uh, one dedicated to vanilla for random building blocks and stuff. And I'm going to try to make sure that anything I have multiple stacks of ends up in the barrels. And that's the long-term plan for the sorting, the sorting solution. It's going to end up covering probably this corner of everything. And I'll use the rest of this platform. Oh, I don't no longer have my speed buff. It's like, why am I moving so slow? Oh, right, because I threw away the thing that made me move fast. So I open, all, open and close all of the chests. Um... Probably the rest of this platform, like this might be the crafting corner, and then up over here I'll start building some tech machines, because this will be a nice little platform that'll do everything I need it to do to finish up this pack. Alright, so, that is what I'm going to busy myself with between episodes, so you don't have to watch me just do a bunch of tedious, annoying nonsense on camera. Instead, next episode, you'll be seeing me tackle the Urgast Tower, as well as showing off the finished sorting system, because there's still a couple of resources I need to move ahead with my Project E plans that I don't currently have. Blaze Rods and Ghast Tears are some of them. And well, where can I find Ghast Tears as easily as an Urgast Tower? And there's probably a couple of places. I'm hoping I'll find the Blaze Rods there. If not, I will... Well, I know of another place to get them, and we'll go tackle that to find them. Yeah, that's doing pretty good. Happy with that. Alrighty, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, please leave a like. Tell me what I did well. If you have not, please leave a dislike. Tell me how I can improve. Consider subscribing either way, and I shall see you next time.